I had a request a few months ago to tell more about old school radios, radios from 1920, 1930, etc. etc. I have quite a few uh, magazines regarding this issue. Choosing your new radio 1933, it gives all kinds of radios that were on the market then, in those days. Uh, Pi, Varley, Marconi phone, Drummer, Stratton, Madrigal, Ferranti, Crafton, Pegasus, Haynes, Cromwell, Ferranti, etc. etc. Uh, many uh, manufacturers from radios were active in those days. And uh, we can say now in 2050 that only a few last. But that's not what this video is all about. Um, I want to show some more magazines from the 20s, 1920, 1930, etc. Okay, let's go to the first magazine. Uh, Columbia Radio. I think it was a very uh, popular mark, popular brand in the 30s. This is from 1932. And of course we always have in the wireless magazine the editor's chat. It's interesting to read about how um, they managed to um, solve problems with radios. The whole radio technology was not very well uh, developed in those days. So there were a lot of... Um, uh, manufacturers that claimed that they had made the best radio. And of course, in a certain way, in a certain sense, that's true. So, this is for instance an issue. Moisture can't harm them. Uh, so, resistors were um, uh, sensitive to moisture. Of course, nowadays we cannot understand that that, that was a problem. Um, other advertisements, I passed them. Uh, shortwave on AC mains. Uh, AC, the, the whole AC mains issue was imported in those days because many uh, radios worked on DC direct current and you needed an, a node battery from say 100 volts or 120 volts or even more and these batteries wore out after say approximately two months or so so to connect a radio to the main supply like it's here uh, it was not common in the first days of the radio. So here we have uh, perhaps in those days uh, a very good uh, invention. Uh, a shortwave converter, that's my opinion on this uh, advertisement, a shortwave converter that could be connected to the main supply. And as far as I know in America this was 110 volts AC in those days. By the way, not all uh, cities had um, AC for all people. So there were houses that had no electricity at all in those days. I can go on about this question. Uh, of course, transformers were also very important in the radio technology. The whole um, idea about a high quality transformer for all kinds of frequencies was not very much developed. 
So there were all kinds of transformers that had different uh, specifications in the audio range or for ha perhaps in the high frequency range. I don't know that exactly, but surely in the audio range the quality of transformers differed. So not every transformer could uh, reproduce uh, the good audio sound. It was all experimental. Of course uh, there was also scientific um, approach in those days. Uh, here we see, I think, an advertisement about condensers, so capacitors. Okay. Listen to the world, of course, listen to the world. And these are only the advertisement um, pages on su from such a magazine from 1933. Uh, uh, Cossar was a popular brand in Britain. And the Cossar valves were made um, in this advertisement in a very consistent way. Of course, uh, valves and the inside of valves, the anode, the cathode, the grids, etc., must, et must be uh, uh, produced, mounted in a very precise way. So all these tubes had to be identical, completely identical, to give all these tubes the same properties uh, whatever people uh, use them in whatever situation. So uh, the measurements, the dimensions from the grid, the dimension from the anode, the way the anode was constructed was very very important and that had also a lot to do with the uh, scientific uh, approach from these uh, factories that made these valves. Also in the Netherlands we had exactly the same approach by the Philips organization that also made uh, radio tubes and made them very precise. So they had a good name in uh, radio building. Broadcasting house. So that's of course a new issue. A broadcasting house. Facts and fancies. Of course, in the, uh, the 30s, 1930, 1920, uh, all the um, radio um, receptions and radio uh, programs had to be made in a proper way. The radio programs were made in these kinds of studios. I also have pictures from these kinds of studios in the Netherlands in 1932 or so. And they look more or less the same. These studios look typical English. And in the Netherlands they look a little bit like rooms where people live and there is a piano. And all the uh, musicians can make their music in that room. Uh, the concert hall of course. Very famous in England, the concert hall. Perhaps the Beatles have also played here. I don't know that exactly. And this is, for instance, a photograph from the center of German broadcast activities. I don't know where this photo was made, but it shows that in those days every uh, state, everyone was very proud of their radio activities. Radio uh, transmission and reception. Here tune tables for I think 78 uh, records. Gallery of the concert hall again. And here in these magazines we always have um, uh, projects where everyone interested in the radio can make a radio. So everybody's portable. 
1933. Sorry, 32. A schematic from a simple portable radio. By the way, simple. Is it so simple? I don't know. All these radios consisted very much of coils. Coils were the key to good success. Here we have a coil, uh, antenna coil, I think. First transistor. Perhaps this is even a um, superheterodyne. I have to read the article. There's no time to do that now. Uh, because this video is only a demonstration. It's a superhet superheterodyne circuit, so sure, it's a superheterodyne circuit. And I think that was the very good way to get selective uh, radio receptions in 1933, but, only, but also now, in 2015. I think it is a good, uh, a good radio concept. Of course, we can now we cannot uh, find these tubes nowadays, but perhaps you can find some replacement. The same article, everybody's portable continued. Uh, attractive tuning controls. Okay. Uh, brings in scores of radio stations. I believe this. This whole radio concept will surely work properly. And the big problem in those days and again now were these schematics. These kind of drawings about how the radio had to be made. So when you make one mistake in the wiring the whole radio doesn't work. So perhaps it's a better idea to to show uh, such uh, circuits in another way. I don't know in which other way, but uh, to, key, to give such a circuit uh, a better approach, a better way, in such a way that everyone can understand how the wiring was made and how it has to be done. So blindly following such a drawing does not lead to success. That's my opinion. But of course there will be many people in those days that had had success with such a circuit. Again, completely assembled and ready for placing cabinet. And again. So I cannot go further in this video because my a camera card says that I'm at the end. So only a few images from uh, the pages from this old uh, 1932 uh, magazine. The Ideal Home Super Scottish Broadcasting Complete Superhead Radiogram must we have licenses? Ah, good question. The ideal home super, etc. etc. We test before you buy. That was kind of editor magazine where they tested uh, components or complete uh, radio circuits built in wooden cabinets, etc. Wish you luck.